Okay, because PLLs with charge pumps are discrete time systems, we're going to need to use the Z transform when we do their analysis for stability a bit later on. So we'll do a brief review of Z transforms. So before we begin with, this, uh, or this, the good starting place to begin with is to start with a Laplace transform. All right, and recall that for a Laplace transform, big F of S is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of some function little f of t e to the minus st dt. And let's assume that our f or little f of t is a sampling operation. So here we're going to assume that f of t is sampling with a period of 1 over t of s, or pardon, pardon t of s, and a sampling frequency of 1 over t of s. So let's write a new function, f star of t, which is equal to the summation from k is equal to minus infinity to infinity of f at discrete time steps n times t sub s times the delta operator t minus n t of s. So we've got a discrete sampling operation. And let's further assume that if we wanted to transform this into a new vector f of f star of s, we would take the Laplace transform. of f star of t. This new function would be a function in z, f of z, where z is equal to e to the s t sub s. Okay, this leads to the general definition for our Laplace transform, or for our z transform. Our general definition is f of z is equal to the summation from n equals minus infinity to infinity of some function little f of n times z to the minus n. Let's look at an example and we'll consider a step function. So our function little f of n is equal to u of n, and if we do a transform, f of z is equal to the sum from n equals minus infinity to infinity of u sub n times z to the minus n. Now we know that the step function is just 0 for all time before time 0, and then it becomes 1. So we can take our summation and change its limit from n equals minus infinity to infinity and change it to n equals zero to infinity because of that. So our new Z transform is sum of n equals zero to infinity of Z to the minus n. And of course, if we expand this, this is just one plus one over Z plus one over z to the minus 1, sorry, z to the minus 2, sorry, 1 over z squared plus 1 over z cubed, etc. Now we can compress this and we know that this has a closed form solution and it's equal to 1 over 1 minus z to the minus 1 or z divided by z minus 1 if we multiply the numerator and denominator by z. Okay, so in general, our transforms are going to take the form where we're going to have a time domain signal, h of t, and we're going to transform it into the z domain, capital H of z. 
if we have any delay in our time domain signal, for instance, h of t minus n times t s, the sampling time, this is equivalent to saying that this is z to the minus n, where n is the delay in samples, times big H of z. So what we have here is that if we want to add any delay, a delay in the discrete domain is z to the minus 1, and its continuous time domain equivalent is e to the minus j omega times t sub s. Okay, so let's look at an example of our transforms that we know in the continuous domain. So for instance, let's look at the step function in, a, in the continuous domain. Here we have a step function, u sub t, or u of t, and we do a Laplace transform on it, and we get our Laplace transform is equal to 1 over s, and we know that this is an integrator. In the discrete domain, we would have a discrete sampling, a discrete step function. So we'd have our discrete points at different sample times. This function is labeled u sub n. And when we do our z transform like we saw on the prior page, we get a z transform that's equal to 1 over 1 minus z to the minus 1. Now, this is an integrator in the z domain. And more commonly, this would be called an accumulator, if we're talking about it in a, the digital domain. And a digital accumulator is the same as a continuous time integrator. OK, we have different types of integrators that we're going to look at. So one type of integrator is our the one that we just looked at, 1 over 1 minus c to the minus 1. And this is a zero delay integrator. We can add delay to the integrator by changing the numerator. So for instance, we can add a half delay by making the numerator z to the minus 1 half, keeping the denominator the same. So this is what we would call a half delay integrator. And this is equivalent to kind of putting a 0 in the uh, integration uh, in our continuous time plane. And we can make a full delay as well, z to the minus 1 over 1 minus z to the minus 1. So what we see is z to the minus n is a delay operator. of n samples. And this is similar to differentiation in the continuous time domain. OK, so we won't be using z transforms for a few days now, but I just wanted to make sure that we had the tools uh, to start to use them uh, as we move forward in the class.